<laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Joe Wink alongside me, Tanner Rowe. We're about to get game number three of the Friday edition of Galesburg Thanksgiving tournament underway. I'd like to thank everybody for joining and listening in. Another a rushed, another rush start as we're about to get things underway. We got a, we're starting off with the Diet Eagles and the Galesburg Silver Streaks. It's gonna be this should be a good one. And Tanner, we just got done watching UT play. Very impressive, even though in the loss. Moline was impressive this morning. Yeah, we saw first of all we started the week off watching the Rocks and they looked very impressive. And then we saw followed up by the Maroons who also played their own game, which we always see them play year in and year out. Panthers also played a good game. They're a young team, and now we're going to see what the Galesburg Silver Streaks have to offer this season. And another big 16 play in, and we are underway as Galesburg wins the tip. Galesburg black jerseys, yellow lettering, white trim. Diet, uh, white jerseys, black lettering, yellow trim. In the paint there, a shot up in the paint, got it to go, and that's Grant Gibson, the sophomore for Galesburg. And Galesburg on the board first. Galesburg going left to right, Diet right to left. Quick look at the starting lineups for Galesburg. Uh, first, we got Trevon Diggins. Also out there, Carson Cheeseman. There's a shot by uh, Darcy Alford. He puts it in. And then we got Grant Gibson, Marcus Ross, and Ryan Carl for Galesburg. And then we got Darcy Alford. And then also out there for, uh, for Diet, we have Alante Walker, as a foul is gonna be called there. And then Kenny, Kenneth Mathis. DeAndre Smith, and rounding out the starting lineup is DeAndre Smith. Uh, the Galesburg Silver Streaks are coached by Mike Reynolds, assisted by Steve Cheeseman, Ryan Hart, Matt Pogue, and Rob Williams. Here's uh, Grant Gibson with the ball now. Kicked it into the corner, trying to get it into the corner for Cheeseman. Knocked out of bounds, it'll stay down here for the Galesburg Silver Streaks. And this one really could make out to be a great game. Both teams seem to be going after it on offense. All right, on offense and defense, really playing hard to start off this game early. This Diet team looks very strong. This Diet team will play United Township later tonight. Galesburg, led by Trevon Diggins, their senior guard. There's Grant Gibson, a sophomore, who played very well up at the varsity level as a freshman. Gibson, a jump shot, no good. Rebound grabbed there by DeAndre Smith. Pushed up by their Alford. Knotted up a two here early in the early goings. We've seen a lot of zones earlier. Galesburg's just going to play man and as they grab the rebound and go the other way. That, read, that shot there by Vines, no good. Up top, Pierce Cheeseman. Cheeseman trying to get things going. Kicked into the corner, here's Grant Gibson. Gibson drives baseline, puts a shot up, got it to go. He's got all four points for Galesburg, and they are up by two in the early goings with just under six and a half to play in the first quarter. Galesburg, uh, home game, even though they're wearing their road jerseys. Galesburg, the home team in this one. Driving the lane there. Nice pass from Alford to number three, Elante Walker. A beautiful look there, and that ties it up at four. This Galesburg team, last year in the big six, was one and eight. Here's a shot in the paint there by Diggins. Rolling around, no good. Rebound out of bounds. It'll stay down at this end. And this Galesburg team just looking to rebuild like some teams are in the big six, and this is year two of that process for under coach Mike Reynolds. Yeah, Galesburg had... Uh some really competitive teams a couple years ago and lost some good players, but now they're back and they've got some big bodies out there and guys who can really get after it on the court. There's a lot, or there's uh, Vines with a nice jump shot. That was a smooth jumper there, and they have their first lead of the game. Nobody stayed back there for the streaks to catch the inbound pass. That could could have cost them. Yeah, very well could have. And Cheeseman now brings it across half court for the streaks. Into the corner, Diggins. Trevon Diggins drives the lane, kicks it up top. Shot from three on the way. Bang! He rattles it in, Ryan Carl. All right, Carl, the big man, stepping outside and showing his range. Yeah, very much so. And full court pressure by Galesburg. Now looking to run his diet. Carter, a nice, a weird floater and a shot there. Foul going to be called on Cheeseman. And Alante Walker is going to go. That's actually, it's going to be on the ground. First team foul on the game of the game for Gale, for Galesburg. Surprised that wasn't a shooting foul either way. They take the three off the inbound. No good. Rebound grab there. Foul over the back on Alante or on Darcy Alford. 
So a quick start here, seven to six already, and each team's really putting the ball in the hoop so far to start it off. Here's Grant Gibson now works it around for Marcus Ross. Diggins looks for Gibson. Nice turnaround jump there by Grip. Gibson, no good. Rebound by Carl, banks it in. As fans starting to file in here is a ball, arid pass, almost stolen away on the ground. Let's see who comes up with it. Jump ball, it is going to It's going to stay with Diet. Now bringing it across, Darcy Alford. Alford for for Diet. Here's a, oh, if I thought Vines traveled, he did travel. I thought Di Vines was, a, I was gonna say, I thought he was about to pull the three, but he traveled in the process of had the head fake. Yeah, he definitely had the look, but he hesitated, passed it out, got him for the travel. Driving it is Cheeseman, pulls it out now. Into the corner, here's Carl, big man spotting up for three again. No good, a rebound grab there by Vines. Up the court, nice pass there to a pass up top to Walker, nothing going as he missed the wide open layup. Gibson gets it up to Cheeseman. Looking for something to happen. Cheeseman in the corner, Diggins with a head fake. Diggins drives the lane, kicks it to Carl. Ryan, Carl waiting for something, three in the lane. Three in the lane, I was gonna say he was posted up in there pretty well. Seemed like forever. You really didn't know what to do with the ball there. He had options, you just didn't get it out of there. But uh, Ryan Carl's a guy I'd like to see him keep going to. He's very big, six foot five, and he's knocked down a three. He's also found in, found a bucket in the paint. So this Galesburg streaks team putting on some pressure early. Galesburg blew out East Peoria earlier tonight, or earlier in the tournament. The uh, yesterday Wednesday, I believe. Ball on the ground, jump ball going to Galesburg. Joe Williams checks in for Galesburg. Grant Gibson with it now. The sophomore for Galesburg. Gibson now waiting for something, throws it across now to Ross. Looking for Joe Williams into the corner. Williams with it for the streaks, kicks it back up top, over to Gibson. Gibson near side corner for Diggins. Diggins now, throws it up top. Now he's waiting for something, he swings it across here, driving the lanes, Williams, Williams had a chance, nice finger roll it in. Joe Williams with a nice little move there, he got the wide open lane and he drove it to the hole and put it in for two. Yeah, he definitely had the lane there, he did a nice job adjusting on the layup to just lay it off the glass and in for two. Now with the ball is Keon Burns. Stolen away there by Joe Williams. Diggins with the ball now, drives the lane, lays it in. Or tried to lay it in, got fouled, they'll go to the line and shoot two. Diggins leaned back there in order to draw the foul, got the foul and he's got a chance to get two at the charity stripe. Good defense there by Williams. He knocked the ball out, stayed with it, threw it to his man and now they're gonna be shooting two free throws when we come back from this timeout. And a timeout by Diet, a 30 second timeout. Three minutes even to go in the first quarter. 11 to six is the score in favor of the Silver Streaks. And Galesburg's only one that came at home last year in the Big Six uh, to, against the United Township Panthers. That was a tough one to swallow last year for UT. Yeah, and it's gonna, from what we've seen so far, it could be a very competitive Western Big Six this year. Of course, we haven't seen Quincy or Allman play yet, but Quincy always possesses a lot of talent. It's always tough to win there. And and, and uh, we're gonna see Quincy on our home floor next Friday night against United Township. So that'll be a tough one, uh, without a doubt. Two shots coming for Trevon Diggins. First shot is up and go. Almost, almost rolled out, but it falls in for him. Early in this one, so Tater, what have you thought so far on the day's action here in this tournament? We've seen some good basketball. Of course, Moline had a pretty convincing victory. And then uh, United Township came out and struggled a little bit, but they stayed in that game and ended up, the score showed a lot less than what the game really was. 
Yeah, it turned out to be a 13 point win for uh, for Englewood. And now, Galesburg up by seven. They're starting to pull away a little bit from Diet. Again, we'll see this, uh, this UT will see this Diet team later tonight at 5.30, their second game. Coming up next, Wellington and Limestone, or Wellinghouse and Limestone. That should be a very, that should be a very good game. Limestone won their first game of the tournament by 19 over UT. Into the game, Ethan Meeker, and there's Williams. Puts up a floater in the lane, no good. A rebound grab there up top by Tyson Parks. Foul call there, and it's gonna be on the baseline. That's the fifth team foul there. Good job there by Parks, grabbing the rebound in traffic over three guys and draws a foul. Now the streaks are gonna keep the ball in. Bad pass and it's going the other way. That could have been a great opportunity for the streaks to pull themselves out to a maybe a even a decent yeah. early lead. Full court pressure again by Galesburg. They are putting playing stingy defense here. Ball stolen away on the ground. I'm not exactly sure what happened. They're saying it went out of bounds. So it's Galesburg's ball. They played really tough D here to start this game. Yeah, re they're really going out there and getting after the ball on defense. And they're playing some good offense as well. And they've knocked down a few shots. And though it is early, Galesburg does look like the better team to this point. Yeah, they do look real get a lot that there's already six fouls in this quarter committed on Diet so six fouls compared to Galesburg's one that's going to play a huge advantage as well yeah especially if you can get on the free throw line early nice ball movement here by Galesburg Grant Gibson the sophomore a pretty big sophomore too for being a or for him and driving the lane now stolen away vines all alone and he will lay it in for two Vines a good job on the steal there just to get the breakaway easy too. A five point lead now for Galesburg. Diggins with the ball, gives it to Gibson. Nice move there by Gibson in the lane. Fouled and he'll go to the line and shoot too as he misses. That's the seventh team foul on Diet. And the thing I've noticed a lot about this Galesburg team is that they get out there and they play together and they talk. There's a lot of chatter out there on the floor that we can hear from even up here and that's always good for a team to do. Yeah, they talk a lot and Gibson missed the first one. <laughs> Second free throw is good. A little bit of miscommunication by Diet on who's going to inbound the ball. <laughs> now here's James Vines gets it across half court. Nice little flip into the corner. Long two there is up and rattles in and out by, Ken by Kenneth Mathis. <laughs> Mathis on the miss. Gibson across half court now for Galesburg. Looking for Williams in the corner. Gets it up top to Parks. Now wait for something to happen. That's Denzel Jones for Galesburg. Ball on the ground. Gibson picks it up. Backdoor cut by Williams. Didn't see him. Back to Williams near side corner. Williams a nice baseline move, puts the shot up. Can't get it to the bank in. Nice rebound by Parks and he gets it to go. Tice from Parks with the put back basket and it is a 16-8 game. They got him doubled up here with a minute to go in the first quarter. And just a minute left now and Diet seemed to struggle a little bit on offense. It's been mostly Galesbury on the offensive side and Diet's been trying to contain them but they're struggling with that as well because Galesbury just moves around so well. There's a shot up in the paint by Vines, no good. And it gets tipped back in by him. After the shot from the baseline, he gets his own rebound and puts it in. Vines has six in this early going. Under 30 seconds to play first quarter. It is a six point lead for the streaks. Let's see if they hold for the last shot. I, I say that and they don't. Ball, ball got blocked by Vines and up the floor now. Here comes Johnson, over to Vines. Vines shot from three, traveled. 
And that's just a mental mistake right there. He could have put the ball on the floor and took a shot or went straight up with it. But now with 17 seconds left, I'm sure the streaks will hold for the last shot. Bringing it up is Ethan Maker, Meeker. Ethan Meeker gets it across half court. Over to Gibson. Gibson guarded tight there by Alante Walker. Gibson drives the lane, fouled, no shot. On the ground, he'll go to the line for the one and one. That's the eighth foul in this quarter alone. Now they're just two away from the double bonus and Galesburg's obviously gonna be at the line a lot in this first half, which will be huge for them as long as they can knock them down. Yeah, and at the line, Gibson's first is good. He's got six. Galesburg playing with guys back now with just a little bit of time left on the clock. They don't want to get beat. Second free throw is good by Gibson. Ross comes back into the game with six seconds left, so this will probably be the last offensive possession by either team in the quarter unless they commit a turnover on the inbound pass. Under five to go. Up the floor now. They Here don't comes seem in any hurry. Johnson now, he's got to get a shot away. Traveling violation. And that's how the quarter will end. 18 to 10 is the score. Diet looked a little sloppy there in that quarter, so let's see if they can change it up as yeah. they get things going. And as uh, Bartonville Limestone now joins the fray here as they have uh, just gotten here. RG3. <laughs> as we're through one quarter. <laughs> <laughs> through one quarter here at Galesburg and game three of the Friday edition of the Galesburg Thanksgiving tournament. I'd like to thank everybody listening in. I'm Joe Winkle alongside of me, Tanner Rowe, and Jess Medina always doing the camera work here for this tournament tonight. And so far in the first quarter, Galesburg leads by eight. and That seems about right the way things went in that first quarter. Uh, Galesburg seemed to be on the offensive end of things more times than not. And they yeah. found ways to find openings and get to the line, and they've really done a good job of possessing the ball in the first quarter. Yeah, and Diet was just very, very, very sloppy there for most part, most of the progression yeah, they, of the half. They were sloppy, and we've seen a little sloppy basketball here today because, of course, it is early in the season, and you got to get some things worked out, you know. It's not always going to flow right away to start the season off, so as the game goes on, I'm sure we'll see Diet clean it up a little bit. Again, as we see Limestone filing in as they got a big game against Westinghouse coming up after this one. But we've still got business here. Darcy Alford swings the ball over for Diet. Ball almost stolen away as that's Vines near side. He's leading the scoring for them with six. Back over to Alford. A 1-2-2 two, two zone here is a shot for two. No good. Rebound grab there. That shot by Mathis, no good. Rebound grab by Cheeseman. Carson Cheeseman for Galesburg, flips it across. Wait for something to happen, now kicked into the corner for Gibson. Carl puts it up, lost handle of it, kicked back out to Diggins. Near side Cheeseman, shot for three on the way, off the top of the backboard. Rebound grabbed there by Diet's uh, Kenneth Mathis. Pushing it now is Alford. And now Diet has a chance to cut into this lead. Nice shot there by number 12, that is DeAndre Smith. Bounce pass there to Carl. Carl now gets it over. In the paint is Grant Gibson. Gibson puts it up, count it, and the foul for Grant Gibson. Fights through the foul and puts it in there. That was a tough play. Twenty to twelve the score, just under seven minutes to go. Second quarter, Gibson makes it a nine point game. Alford now with the ball for Diet. Getting it across half court. Swing pass now, works it around. Back across here with the ball is Alford. Alford now drives the lane, kicks it out into the corner. Waiting for something to happen. Back down low, out of bounds, and it's going the other way. 
seems to, uh, from our point of view, that Diet really doesn't have a sense of how things are going to go on the offensive end for themselves so far in this game. Yeah, a lot of standing around and just throwing the ball back and forth. Don't have much offensive plays set up. And what's hurting them is they're throwing it back and forth unaccurately. Yeah, very, very correct there. A wide open is Carl. Can't get it to go. Foul is going to be called going the other way as Gibson rims out on the three. That wouldn't have counted. 21-12, to 12 and Diet needs something to go in. They just have no momentum. They're playing sloppy right now, and they need something to spark them. Well, they just caught a break there as Carl missed a wide-open opportunity. And this is... These are times in the game when a, the team misses an opportunity like that. You got to capitalize on it. Out of bounds on Carl, so it's going to stay with Diet. <laughs> Getting the ball in now, waiting for something. Trying to get it in, and he does. Here's Vines. Vines drives the lane. Nice move in the paint. Puts a shot up, and it rolls out. Rebound grab there by. Uh, Alaton, Alaton Walker, or Alante Walker, excuse me, and he gets fouled. Foul on Ross, his first, team third. Delonte Walker shooting two for Diet. First one is up. No good. And previous to the foul, Diet missed a wide open layup, and now they missed the first free throw, and it's just the way things have been going so far for them. Second free throw by Alante Walker, no good. Rebound by Diggins. Diggins up the court, kicks it to Cheeseman. Back to Diggins. Waiting now, for Diggins drives, kicks it to Cheeseman on the baseline. Ryan Carl now for Galesburg. Nice pass to Grant Gibson for three. Got it in! A three by Grant Gibson, and it's up to 12. They got him doubled up here in the second quarter. It's 24 12. Into the corner now, shot for three is up, no good. Rebound tipped away and grabbed. Every chance Galesburg has, has gotten to this point to extend the lead, that's exactly what they've done. and They're really locking it down on defense as well. Nice shot there by Kenneth Mazdas, and you're right. And Galesburg's playing really well, de good defense. It doesn't look like it because Diet's just playing so, they're just throwing the ball away it seems sometimes, but Galesburg is throwing the clamps down on defense. And a foul committed there by number 12, DeAndre Smith. So that's the tenth foul. From two. here on out, Galesburg will shoot two free throws, and there's still five minutes left in the half. Yeah, so Galesburg can just keep adding on if they get free throws here. First free throw almost rolls in. And if you're Galesburg, free throws are really going to help you extend the lead more and more. As you're going to get guaranteed two, but they missed both of them there. And it's going to go out of bounds off Ryan Carl. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Carl there. That's Carl's second. Fourth team foul with five minutes to go, second quarter. A ten-point advantage for Galesburg. We're running that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Nice pass down. Here's a shot by Alante, or excuse me, uh, Kenneth Mathis. No good, but he's fouled, and they'll go to the line and shoot two. Last a lot of fouls down. in this game. Last three, last three trips down for the Eagles, they've been sent to the line, and that could really help them get back into this game a little bit. I mean, they are only down 10, but points when the clocks are when the clock stopped are huge. Yeah, all that they need, though, is to hit the free throws. I mean, Walker just had two golden chances, and he missed both free throws. So you gotta, you're, you're right there, but you're right on the fact that they got to get points. when or It's good to get points when the clock stops, but when you get the opportunity, you got to cash in, and he hits both there, which cuts it to eight. Up the floor now, here they come. Gibson thought about shooting the three. Kicks it near side now, waiting for something to happen as Diggins. Other side of the screen there. Back down low to Parks. Parks with a nice move in the paint. Traveling violation, and it's going back to Diet. Now Diet has a good chance. Cut it to six, maybe five. Still four and a half minutes left in the half, so. They could definitely, oh, that's a big turnover there. Stolen away by Diggins, and a foul gonna be committed. 
So Diggins will go to the line and shoot two. Another foul. There's been a lot of fouls in this game. Von Diggins now at the line, shooting to the 5'10 senior guard for Galesburg. Misses the first. You're going to want to see Galesburg start knocking a few of those down. That's three in a row that they've missed from the stripe now. Second one up. No good. They missed their last four. Nice rebound by Parks. Can't get it to fall. Still battling for the rebound. Picked up by Williams. Gibson a shot from the line. Got it. And for a while there, it seemed like there was a lid over the basket for the streaks, but yeah. now they got two to go to extend the lead back up to 10. Here's Sion Burns. Now waiting, now he throws it back down. Kick back out to Burns. Burns drives, floater up in the lane, no good. Rebound grab there, and up core comes Galesburg. Into the corner for Diggins. Diggins makes a move, lays it up. No good. Nice pick up by Parks, and he makes it in. The air ball layup falls right into Parks' hands, and he just puts it in. Had his man on his back. Clear lane to the basket. Burns now kicks it over. Shot from three on the way is rattled in by number 12, DeAndre Smith. Back down to a nine-point game now. Here's a screen set. Nice play to Parks. Parks puts it up. No good. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Another foul. That's about the 14th foul they've had in this half. Three and a half to play still. And recently it hasn't hurt him. Galesburg can't hit from the line at the moment. But we'll see if they can knock down two here with Tyson Parks at the line. He misses the first one. That's five in a row that they've missed now. Thomas Petty was in for uh, Dyett. He comes back out. Park's second one, no good, and they missed six in a row from the line. See if that comes back to bite him later. It's only nine points right now. Here's a long three by Vines. Bang, and he hits a three, and it's down to six. That's a huge three there. That might get Dyett going a little bit. Yeah, he had the open shot, and he was thinking about it the whole time. He just knocked it down, down to six now. Bad pass, and it's stolen away by Diet. Vines with the ball now for Diet for the Eagles, and now they got a chance to cut into this lead some more. And, and a traveling violation. And what have we seen all day when a team has a chance to cut into the lead? They shoot themselves in the foot by making a turnover. Yeah, it seems like every team we've seen today has just got under the under their opponent a little bit by about 10 points, and they'll start to make a run, and they just can't over just can't overcome it. Parks with the ball now for Galesburg. Far side Diggins, Gibson in the lane, puts a shot up, no good. Rebound grab, nice pull, nice pull down there by Mathis, and he off his. Uh, that's the stuff we're talking about. You can't, you can't have those mistakes in games like this. And still early in the season, I guess that's the plus for this team. Another mistake by Diet. Mathis very upset with himself after that one, and foul called. Now the streaks are going to go back to the line again. And everyone in the game right now for Diet has at least two fouls. We'll see how that affects them as well. Yeah, they have they have committed a ton of fouls in this half. And that's seven straight missed free throws for Galesburg. Ross at the line, he can't hit one either. Gibson missed two. Diggins missed two. Parks missed two. I'm sure Coach Mike Reynolds stresses free throws, and he can't be too happy with that right now. They finally get one to fall down, though. Their first one in eight attempts. So it's a seven-point game, two and a half to go. Let's see what Diet can do. Shot up, blocked by Parks. Gibson's got numbers for Galesburg. Drives the lane, easy lay-in. Two points for Grant Gibson. Now the streaks extend it back up to nine. Vines for three. No good. Rebound there by uh, Burns. Lost it. Diggins trying to put him back up by double digits. Puts it in. 
<laughs> Timeout called by Galesburg, and it's back up to 11. Wow. <laughs> and if this was the NBA, James Vines would have about a $5,000 fine. But we're going to leave it at that. Anyway, 11-point lead for Galesburg. As uh, we're moving along here, Diet down by 11. They need to get something going. They played sloppy. They were coming back on a couple good shots, but they got back, and then they just shot themselves in the foot. Gillsburg scores uh, seven point or six points in a row, and they're back up by 11. Yeah, we saw Diet start to make their their run probably before halftime, and once they got up there with Galesburg, they cut it down and Galesburg just didn't allow it to happen. They started to run themselves and they knocked down a free throw and stole the ball, got a layup to go, and next thing you know, you're down again by 11. Anyways, we get things back underway here, under two to play second quarter. Driving the ball now is Sion Burns. Burns for Diet, looking for something to happen. Trying to... <laughs> Trying to get it to uh, DeAndre Smith, finally does. Back to Burns. Burns now finds Smith. Nice head fake there. Lost the ball. Foul going to be called. 16 foul on Galesburg. Well, that's been an advantage for the streaks as well as Diet hasn't gone to the line to shoot the one and one in the first half. That's only a six foul on the streak, so. Here's a three by Vines off the mark. Rebound grab there. Easy two by Burns. Dig Diggins now brings it up. Under a minute and a half to go. Second quarter. Nine point lead for Galesburg. Looking for the head fake there. Kicked over to Gibson. Battling for it there. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay down here for Galesburg. With just a little over a minute left, and Diet trails by nine. They could cut into this lead before halftime and set themselves into a good position to come out in the second half and get a victory. They got a chance. They can do something with it, maybe. Waiting for something now. He throws it in. Williams with it for Galesburg. Nice pass to Gibson. Gibson drives, puts it up, banks it in. Back up 11. Under a minute to play. This Diet team just looks outmatched right now. They got to get something going. Down by 11. And Joe Williams did a good job there leading Gibson on that pass for the wide open layup. Here's a shot money for Kenneth Mathis. Hanging around. They're locked down by nine. 44 or 40 seconds left. Let's see if Diet can chop back down into it. If I'm Gillsburg, I want to hold for the last shot so they don't have anything less than a nine point lead at the half. Knocked away there. Here's Gibson. Gibson drives the lane, almost stolen away, and it is stolen away traveling, though, on uh, DeAndre Smith. Seems like every time that uh, Diet has a chance to steal the ball and go the other way, they travel or double dribble. And yeah, that's about the fifth time they've them. traveled in this game. Trying to steal the inbounds, they get it to Gibson. Gibson drives, shot up, and it's good. Back to 11. That was just too easy there for Gibson. Now 15 seconds left. Diet will probably hold for the last shot. Vines wants to go in alone on isolation play. Vines puts a shot up, blocked by Parks. Gibson with it, two, one, got to put it up, and he does. Oh. Off the mark. So at the end of the half, the Galesburg Silver Streaks represent the big six in a big way. Up by 11 over Diet. And we'll be back with the second half of action for Tanner Alm, Joe Winkle. We'll be back with the second half of action between Galesburg and Diet. This is a production of FTP Sports. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. We are here at the uh, second half of game three of the Friday versus Friday. Uh, Day of the Galesburg uh, Thanksgiving tournament. Joe Ink alongside of me is Tanner Rowe. We're getting things going in the second half of action here. Galesburg versus Diet. In the paint there, that's Ryan Carl. Reverse, no good. Rebound grabbed there by DeAndre Smith. Tanner, what were your thoughts on that first half of action? I think Galesburg really controlled the game on both ends of the floor. They really came out early, scored right away, put points on the board, and 
they showed uh, Diet what the tempo was going to be, and now it's now it's up to Diet to play to their level. Diet now with the ball, kicked into the corner. Ball is stolen away, but it's knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay down here as it went off of Grant Gibson. And if you're Diet, obviously you're going to have to come out. You're going to have to win the second half, but. If you can't overcome this deficit, which isn't too large at the moment, you want to just play a great second half and learn a lot about your team here early in the season. Yeah, very early in the season. Here's Grant Gibson off the steal. Knocked away. Ball stolen and still held on. Battling for it again. Goes back up now. Here's Cheeseman. Over to Carl. Handed off there. Foul called. First foul. There was a, there was a lot of fouls on the in the first half. Everybody out there for uh, Diet has at least two fouls. So yeah, I was ready to say that Diet started off the second half just like the first half right away getting a foul and they can't afford to put Galesburg at the line as many times as they did in the first half. Even though Galesburg didn't convert on all their opportunities, it just isn't very good for Diet to let them go get free points as they steal it away here and. Get, Two points missed there, and here's Vines in the lane now for Diet. Turnaround shot, airballed, rebound grab by Carl, and you cannot miss opportunities like that. Vines now, get, Vines now gets it back for Diet. Up the floor now comes Darcy Alford. Alford with it now for Diet. Galesburg, who next week opens big six players. A shot for three by Smith. Foul, they'll go to the line and shoot three free throws. Skillsburg next week opens big six play at Morton Fieldhouse against Moline, which should be a pretty good game. So now you got a chance to go to the line if you're diet if you're diet and you got a chance to go to the line and hit three free throws right here. Cut this lead down to single digits, down to eight if you hit all three, and that's huge if you're diet to start off the second half like that. This is the first free throw. Second free throw, no good, so. And that about sums Diet's day up right there. Missed free throws, and they just really haven't got any breaks to go their way so far. DeAndre Smith misses the first two. Third one is up, and it is no good. Re nice rebound there by Vines. So still an 11-point game. Alford with it for Diet. Back to Smith, trying to redeem himself. Got it. <laughs> so he misses three free throws and comes up and hits a three, so. Now well, that's definitely the best way you can redeem three missed free throws. So far early, Diets went out and got the ball a lot more than they did in the first half. Here's Cheeseman passed up a three, a long two there by uh, Ross is good, and it's back up to ten. Diet just got caught up running around down there on defense and letting men slip outside of the corner and hitting an open three or open two, a long two. Alford now trying to call Smith over. Stolen away by Cheeseman. Foul on Alford. Or excuse me, Smith. Another foul. And there's been a lot of fouls in this game, man. That's it's four on Smith now. He might foul out before the fourth quarter, which would not be good. And you already got two other guys out there on the floor with three fouls. Cheeseman now with the ball looking for something to happen. Gets it inside to Carl. Out of bounds and it'll stay down there. And Coach Mike Reynolds is fired up for his squad. Trying to get them going. Galesburg up by 10. Kicked into the corner for Gibson. Gibson down low to Carl. Ryan Carl now, nice little turn and flip, got it to go. And they're back up by 11, or 12, excuse me. And Galesburg's just doing a great job of keeping a steady lead out there. And it's really gonna be hard for Dyad to catch up if they just keep putting the ball in the basket and forcing turnovers the way they have. Here's a nice little keep in there, Burns for three, fouled again. And oh, and he got the three to go, and he's gonna have a chance for a four-point play. 
I didn't think it. I didn't think he was even gonna come close to falling. But that might be a momentum changer there if he can hit the free throw. Yeah, it just depends how his teammates feed off of that one, and definitely just lofted that one up there. Got fouled. Now a chance for four-point play, cutting the lead. And he hits now. it. Beautiful there, and he gets four. And it's now a. Eight point game, and you never know if you let him hang around, you could get a chance to stretch one, two, two zone here by Diet. <laughs> Diggins in the plate, picked out to Gibson for three. Bang, and he puts him back up by 11. That's a huge way to answer there by Grant Gibson. Kelsberg's found a lot of holes in this uh, Diet defense so far, and that's really going to hurt him. You can't win the game if you don't play Dutch defense. Now with the ball is Burns after just hitting a huge three. And the four point play. And then they, that's kind of deflating after getting four points and maybe a momentum changer and then giving up a big three like that. It's really deflating. Double dribble. And another turnover by Diet. I've lost count. I really wasn't counting, but they've got to be over 15 turnovers in this one. Yeah, easily. And you're gonna to want to go on a run and you're gonna catch up in this game. You gotta get the momentum in your hands and obviously a four point play is not gonna do it, so we'll see what it's gonna take for Diet to get their get their game going here. Trying to find someone in there's Parks. Turns around, blocked shot, rebound is out of bounds, it'll go the other way. Back to Diet. And Diet definitely has gotten the ball to go their way a few more times in this second half to start it off, but executions really is the key here. Yeah, you can say that again. It is. Uh, they are just lack. Lack of execution is what's been killing them so far. 3.40 to go. 44-33 is the score. Almost dribbled it out of bounds again. Burns looking for something. Burns with a crossover move. Waiting for something to happen. Tight defense by Diggins, and he dribbled it off himself and out of bounds. And you cannot, I mean, that's just not acceptable right there at this level. You can't do that. Yeah, and we've seen that a few times from different teams today. I mean, it's just like, I think it really comes down to early season mistakes and wiping the rust off, really. Here's a nice floater by Gibson. Smooth shot there by Gibson. And the sophomore... I just now noticed that, but Craig Gibson has 26. Yeah. I don't know if that's a mess up on the scoreboard or not, but Grant Gibson has 26, and we're only in the third quarter. You think wow. that's something we would have noticed, but he's kind of, I don't know how, quietly scored 26 points in the third. It's only the third quarter. Wow. Gibson's on route for at least 40 the way he's playing, and he's in a lot of shots. I never really noticed that he had that many, but... That's nuts, Gibson again. And if you look at it, nobody on the floor besides Gibson has any more than four points. Then so not, I mean, well, you got nine points and well for him for their team. And for Diet, if you really find Gibson out there on the floor, you could this could be a different game altogether. Yeah, Gibson's hit a couple big threes. We really haven't that's just been, yeah, I guess we haven't really been, I mean, I guess we haven't even been catching him out there on the floor. That's how crazy it's been. He is, that's a quiet 26. Yeah, he's just playing under the radar right now, and I'm sure they're trying to pick it up down there on the Eagles bench, and I'm, I mean, their coach has to be getting on him about that, but there's nothing you can do when a guy's on. I'll tell you what, though, we've seen some good scoring performances today. Yeah, you had uh, uh, 18 points or 17 points by. Uh... Now I can't remember. Now I can't think of the name of the player that scored it. Uh, Jed Wood for Moline. He had a good performance for them. Um, and then uh, Shaton Moore for the uh, Eagle or for the Englewood Eagles earlier. He had a great performance as well with 31. Now with 26 for Gibson, and we've seen some great basketball played all day. And a screen there is a shot by Burns. No good. Rebound grab there by Galesburg. Diggins bringing it across half court. 
far side there. That's Denzel Jones. Jones drives baseline, kicked into the corner. Thought about shooting it, didn't. Re puts up a shot, no good. Rebound grabbed there by Sion Burns. And now to close out this third quarter, Galesburg really has a chance to pull away, get a significant lead, and hold on to it in the fourth quarter feeling comfortable. So now here we go, working it around now. It's Kenneth Mathis back up top to and another traveling violation. I lost count on how many that is, but that's about six or seven they've had in this one, and they cannot keep shooting themselves in the foot like this. Yeah, between travels and double dribbles, throwing the ball around out of bounds, and it's just really always going to come back and haunt you, no matter who you are. Step back by Gibson, no good. Rebound out of bounds. Other way, and Diet will have the ball back. The thing about Gibson is he's only a sophomore. He can really do a lot of damage to the Western Big Six these next two years. Yeah, and uh, the last or last year he played well as a sophomore and got the ball back, and Williams throws it in, shot out of bounds, and. With uh, 2.09 to go, the score is 46-33, up for Diet. Here's Vines in the paint. Charge called on Vines, and that's his third foul. Diet hasn't committed as many fouls as they did in the first half. And if you take any positives out of the second half, it's that. that they haven't committed as many fouls, but the turnovers are still killing them here. Yeah, and they got off to a decent start, but that three by Gibson flattened them, it seemed like. They're on a little 5-0 run. Gibson in the paint, knocked down hard. Foul called. We're gonna get the ball in. Here's Gibson in the paint, foul, then he'll go to the line and shoot two. Gibson hits the first, he has 27, and make that 28. He hits both from the line, and they're up by 15. And Gibson has 28. There's a wild shot there, no good. Rebound grabbed down by Mathis. Puts it back up, no good. Rebound by Williams is grabbed. Looking up there for Gibson. Pulls up, he finds Williams. Gibson with the ball now. Gibson shot for two. No good, but he'll go to the line again. Gibson's he's in such a big body, he finds a way to get to the line or get an open shot. He's gonna hurt you in many different ways. And <clears throat> I know these Galesburg fans have to feel good knowing that they're gonna have this guy sticking around a few more years as he's putting on a show in front of his home court. First shot is up and good from the line. He's got 29, looking to join the 30 point club today at the tournament. Second free throw, no good, and it is a 16-point lead. Up the floor now for Diet. Another turnover, and this is like I don't. I sound like I'm being redundant when I say this, but this is you can't have that happen. Yeah, you just really, really cannot afford that to happen, and it's happened all day long. That was just a case of catching the ball and looking towards the basket before the ball was even in his hands. Near side now, that's back up top, ball stolen away again, and out of bounds again, and it's going back the other way. No breaks today for the Diet Eagles. And 
really after a game like this, all you can do is regroup, come back later, and play your game. And UT's up there in that top corner. They're thinking, man, I hope they have this type of game against us because UT would like to get a win here before the day is over as well. Driving here is Williams. Kicked out to Diggins. Back up top to Denzel Jones. Jones drives the paint. Picks it up. No good. Gets his own rebound. No good again. And now it's back over to Mathis. Up the floor now and another arid pass. The Eagles look like they're starting to get frustrated out there amongst each other. 48 seconds left. Galesburg's going to bring it back the other way. and Not so sure if they'll try to run it out just yet. Diet might get one more offensive possession. Back over now and with under 35 seconds left, stolen away. Battle of turnovers right now as Galesburg just holding on to a big lead. Here's a shot from three is up. No good. Rebound grabbed there off the miss. Working it back around now as Alante Walker had the three, missed it, got his own board, keeping it alive. They're going to probably hold for the final shot. Alford now at the ball for Diet. Working it around, here's Matt. The shot in the lane, no good. Rebound, grab there, and out of bounds, or rebound out of bounds. It'll stay down here for Diet with 7.6 seconds left. Third quarter of action. Diet down 49 to 33 to the Big Six representative Galesburg Silver Streaks. Trying to move the big six to two and one on the day. Under five to go in the quarter. Up top now, driving the lane, shot up, foul, then he'll go to the line and shoot two with .6 seconds left in the quarter. That is uh, Alante, uh, Alante Walker, he'll go to the line and shoot two for the Diet Eagles. Now you go to the line with just about .6 seconds left. You can basically say the quarter's over and hit two free throws. You get a little positive out of this going into the fourth quarter and hopefully you can make a run in the fourth. And he misses the first. Ever since they made this a 41 to 33 game on the four point play, it's been an 8-0 run for the streaks. And that feels like an eternity ago, honestly. And the second one missed, and that's how the quarter will end. Well, Diet really has not been impressive from the free throw line. Not only are they're not just barely missing their free throw attempts, but missing them by a long shot. And yeah. that's something they're gonna have to work on throughout the season. Free throws just play such a major role in the game. So through three quarters of play, we got eight minutes left in this one. Grant Gibson leading all store scores with a quiet 29. And now it seems like that we're gonna start, now that we're gonna start saying that he's got a bunch of points, he's not gonna score anymore. <laughs> yeah, but with 29 points going into the fourth quarter, you could easily see him scoring 40 in this game, maybe even more. Depending how competitive it is out there and if Diet plans on fouling at all down the stretch or whatever, but He's definitely going to be a dangerous player in the Western Big Six this year. Yeah, and I, I mean, we were talking about it on the way up here, and even Jess said it. Uh, Galesburg's going to be tough in the Big Six this year. They're going to get some wins, and with Quincy and Rock Island, and we're saying this, and this is a tough. As the more we think, the more we see these teams play, we don't realize how tough this conference still could be. Even though the conference lost its five best players from last season. Yeah. Well, it actually, it's seven best players from last season. Definitely is a tough <laughs> tough conference, and going to Quincy is always tough. But, of course, coming here to Galesburg in this compacted gym is never a walk in the park either. I mean, you could come here any night and lose, but I think we're going to see Rocky have a, a much larger advantage with all their experience, and, of course, Quincy as well this year in the Buster Big Six play. Yeah, and I'm, I, I'm, so, I'm really excited with the countdown seven nights away from Big Six action. Quincy at home, or Quincy will play us, United Township, at home next week. Um, as a ball loose on the ground, Adam Cheeseman replays it, it's over, and, or double dribble. Uh, Galesburg goes to Moline, and Rock Island will play at Ullman at Augustan, or at, at the uh, Erickson Center. Um, if you had to have a prediction, what would your game of the week next week be for the Big Six? Um, I'd probably say that Galesburg and uh, Moline. Moline is a big matchup next week. Both teams are pretty good, and that could be a big deciding game as the ball falls out of bounds off of Galesburg. But uh, 
Moline really likes to slow it down, pass the ball around, and just choke you to death on the defensive end. So that could be a real good matchup to watch in Moline next week. And uh, not sure where we'll be next week, possibly at United Township or uh, the Rock Island game. We have, we have undecided on that one yet, but uh, hopefully you can listen in for that one. Uh, as next week we kick, next Friday we kick off Big Six action. And I'm real excited to see all the teams kick off and see what uh, we got in store for this season in the Western Big Six. Driving the lane now, there's Diet's uh, Alford. Still ball knocked around there, and the Galesburg Silver Streaks pick it back up. And a team that really goes unmentioned in the Big Six is Allman. They're going to have themselves a lot of new faces this year, and it'll be interesting to see what they can do in the Big Six as well. Yeah, that's really the only team that we haven't talked about in the last couple of days. We were talking a lot about the Big Six on uh, Wednesday, and they're stolen away by Gibson. Gibson looking to hit the 30 mark on the day. Drives up, lays it in. Of course, we know Allman did lose one of the best players in the Western Big Six in Tyler Yoakum, so... To see how uh, who steps in to fill his role, and also just to see how good the Pioneers compete this year in the Western Big Six after recent struggles. Yeah, they had recent struggles last year. They finished, I believe, six and four in the conference, or five and five. I'm not really sure what what, but they beat UT last year. They swept Rock Island and Moline, or they, or they swept Moline and they split with Rock Island. So. That right there is the Spoil Moline, and then that's four wins right there. And then they beat Galesburg once, or I think they beat them twice. Or they beat them once. They split with Galesburg. And lost two to Quincy. Yeah, so they went uh, five and five. So, Which is a vast improvement from the years previous. Yeah, when they were losing a bunch of games in a row in the big six. So Yeah, they actually were. Oh, a big elbow there. Yeah, and uh, Alante Carter got hit in the elbow, or the hit in the throat, I believe, by an Aaron elbow. And Cheeseman fouled down below. So 51-33 is the score. 5.47 to go in this fourth quarter. And Cheeseman at the line. For Galesburg, his first shot is up and no good. But uh, like Allman, like we were saying, Allman, they still have uh, Adam Hugerworth. Um, though Hugerworth hasn't played with them yet because he's still got a state championship game tonight for him. And uh, they also have Sean Weatherall. And they got a couple guys returning. So Allman's, Allman could be a spoiler this year in Big Six play. They definitely have some athletic guys on their on their team and. There's a shot in the lane by Burns. Or excuse Kenneth Mathis, excuse me. It's 52 to 35. Gibson now with the ball. Nice pass down low. Bank. Oh, I thought Ross hit it, but out of bounds and it'll stay down there. That was a good find by Gibson. Ross just couldn't quite finish there. And either way, it's gonna stay down. Diet's gonna take a full timeout now. Try and regroup here. Like we've said before, Galesburg could have the opportunity to throw some guys in off their bench and get a little production off them and see what they can do as well. Yeah, 52 to 35 is the score. Galesburg pulling away cleanly and looks like they're gonna capture a win about 521 to go. And again next week, next Friday, big six action starts up and excited to see UT jump in and again they play tonight against this Diet team, and what do you think that they're gonna have to show against Diet later tonight? Well, they got I a think, golden opportunity to pick up a win. I think what they showed earlier is really could uh, beat this Diet team, but for all we know, Diet, who we have never really seen before, they could just be having an off game themselves, and uh, it, it could be interesting later tonight to see if the Panthers can pick up their first win of the season, a young team. It'd be nice to pick up a win here in Galesburg for them going into Western Big Six play, and it's really a golden opportunity for them. Yes, United Township tomorrow plays against. There's a steal on the Diet side. 
working it back around as Gibson brings it back up for Galesburg. UT tomorrow plays East Peoria and Westinghouse, the two teams they haven't played yet in the tournament. And East Peoria, we saw them earlier. That could be another opportunity for the Panthers to pick up a win in this tournament. Driving the baseline there, shot no good. Rebound and fouled. up here comes number five that is we're gonna back around there was vines back now this side that's uh mathis I it does have two players on the floor with two fouls or with four fouls right now yeah in uh vines and and another travel with 442 to 35 is the score No, it's really gonna have to work on those tra that traveling. We've seen that a lot from them tonight. Here is Trevon Diggins. Diggins drives, kicks in the corner. Ross back up now as they circle the ball around. Back into the corner for Ross. Nice look there to Carl. Corner Diggins. Back to the shot from three. Off the mark. Rebound grabbed there by Carl. In the paint. Carl goes up with it. Foul and they'll go to the line two. Carl was a guy who started this game out hot with five quick points, and now he only has seven. See if he can knock down a couple from the stripe. It's the first. Oh, comes in for Diet, in for Cian. 53 to 35 is the score. Second shot from Carl is up, and it is off the mark. Rebound out of bounds. Diet. You could almost say that Carl set the tempo of this game when he stepped into that three real early and put him up 5 nothing to start it off the bat. Yeah, that was pretty good. They haven't looked back since. Let it all, all game. Driving lane, nice move by Vines, and it falls. Two points. One-two zone here by Diet. And now kick back out to Cheeseman. Over, stolen away by Vines. Vines drives up and lays it in. Diet now starting to move around. It's back to 14, 3.40 to go. And if Diet's going to make a run, it would be, right now, would be a golden time to do so. And another, another steal. steal. A chance for Diet. Over to Vines. Vines pulls up. No good. Man, you can't blow those opportunities. It seems like once they have pressure, they can't hit it. Yeah, and Cheeseman and I, nicely slows it down. I thought Vines would go back to Alfred there, but he went up himself and off the mark. Now, Gillsburg has an open opportunity. Count the best, Grant Gibson. He's got 33. And they're up by, f now back up to 16, and he is now the tournament leader for points in a game. Gibson has 33, and he's going to the line. Still three minutes to play in this one. He could really do some damage to the scoreboard. Gibson hits the free throw, he's got 34. Williams now in for Cheeseman. Four now for Diet. Hand it off to Vines. Vines drives the lead. nice little look there, it puts the shot up, banks it in. Number 33, that's Jimmy Blossom. Diad has started to pick things up here a little bit in this fourth quarter, and that's good to see. Now for looking for uh, Ross there. Gibson wanted it back. Skip pass for Williams. Gibson now at the ball for Galesburg. Gibson steps back. Back over to Ross. Ross drives baseline. Puts it up and lays it in. Back up to 17. Galesburg just does not want them to fight back into this game whatsoever. They're answering about just about everything that Diad has put on the board. Higgins bringing it up. Gibson wants the ball in his hand. He's got it. Gibson gives it to Ross. Skip pass for Diggins. Diggins drives. Pulls the shot. Fouled on the attempt. They don't go to the line. 
Gibson is definitely feeling it. He's calling for the ball every chance he gets. So that's five on Mathis now, and he's going to come out for the remainder of these two minutes and 12 seconds. As Jason McMillan checks into the game for the uh, yeah. Diggins' first free throw. In and out, 17-point lead, 2-12 left in this one. Gillsburg's lead is now up to 18, and if you're Diet, you just want to find ways to score as quick as possible. And of course, if you're Galesburg, you're just going to try to run the clock out. Sloppy play there, jump ball. This one's going to go to Galesburg. Two minutes and four seconds left in this one. With two minutes under two to go, skip past near side Williams. And down low as Ross gets two, and it's now up to 20 point lead, the biggest lead of the game. Now Diet's gonna work it around and take a three and knocking knocking it down. Number 22 Vine. Gillsburg drives the lane, kicks it out. Open three for Meeker. And it's good. Meeker's three goes in and that's up by they take a 20 point lead by the 117 to go. Meeker's first bucket of the night, a three, and the freshman coming off and getting some time, so that's good to see. It's a 20-point lead for Galesburg, and this one's all but over with a minute 17 to be played. Unless, of course, we do see a miracle. Get to see a miracle since the Olympics, and I wasn't alive back then, so I don't think one's coming tonight. So, 20 point lead for Galesburg. They're just trying to finish this one minute and 17 seconds off. For some reason, Williams is putting full court pressure on him. I don't know why. Anyway, and Galesburg trying to steal it, and they do. Jump ball. And I think for Galesburg, that's just uh, you got guys coming in off the bench. And you want them to run the full court press just so they know what they're doing out there. Yeah, and here's a chance to get the ball back in. And it's 10 to go. Nice screen there. Here's Vines. Vines pulls it back out. Step back three by Vines is up, and it's good. Nice three there by Vines to cut it to 17. And I and UT's going to this team later. That's a guy they're going to have to watch out for because Vines has been shooting the ball pretty well today. Yeah, Vines with 19 points. He... He's definitely been a standout player for Diet. So a 17 point lead with 50 seconds left. This will be the last game we're going to call today. So hopefully, uh, thank, thank, quickly thank everybody that listened in today. Hope you have a safe Thanksgiving and a happy Thanksgiving yesterday. And hope you guys can join us as we see the week six play next Friday. We'll either be at all Augustana, UT, or uh, Moline. Calling the big six games to kick off the season of conference action next Friday. So, Tater, we uh, got the chance to see three games. What are you going to take uh, as we got time? What are you going to take from these three games here? Well, we saw very three very good uh, Western Big Six teams. Very young. They each have lost someone over the past two years of significance to their teams. Multiple players, in fact, and. Uh, 
it looks like they're starting to recover from that. And they're getting their core groups of guys out there to play bat, play the way that they've been playing the last few years, all three teams. And it looks to be a very competitive and exciting year in the Western Big Six. I can't wait to get it underway. Yeah, next games is Mines is just driving the lane up and under. Got it after two missed threes by him. He finally gets it. Yeah, 25 to go. After the, they start getting out there and playing against each other in conference play, we're going to learn a lot from each team. and It's going to be really interesting throughout the course of this long season. Yes, yeah. yeah we'll see that again. And we still have three teams we haven't seen yet. In, uh, or uh, two teams we haven't seen yet in Allman and Quincy. We saw Rock Island Wednesday, and they ever as they dominated a very good Peoria Richwoods team. And now is uh, under 20 seconds to go. Vines yeah. holds back, just five second call. And what I've seen out of the three Western Mix Six teams that have played today in Moline, United Township, and Galesburg is, I wonder if they can get out and run with Rock Island because they're a very fast and athletic team and they're gonna be a tough matchup in the Western Big Six this year. Very Definitely good. my early favorite to win it all. Yeah, my, I'm not going to lie, my pick, if I had a preseason pick to win the Big Six, it would be Rock Island. They were dominant front Wednesday, and they just look very, very good. And shot at the buzzer by Vines, no good. At the end of the game, Galesburg wins, 69-49. Coming up next is Martinville Limestone against uh, Westinghouse. But this will be the end of the day for us as we are going to sign off. We can't work it. Thanks, everybody, for letting us be here today. Tanner, any final thoughts on the day's action? We saw a good day of basketball, and uh, Western Big Six teams, two out of the three, proved a lot to us. Panthers also proved a lot, but couldn't pick up a win. Hopefully they can steal one tonight, and as well as the other two teams can get some wins tonight out of the Western Big Six, and then we'll get rolling next week. And Western Big Six play, I can't wait. And uh, we're uh, gonna sign off for today for Tanner Rowe. I am Joe Winkle, and I thank everybody for listening in. And a couple of big games. Won their first game by 15 against Peoria. UT lost by 13 to uh, Englewood. And Galesburg wins by 16 against Diet. This Diet team will play UT later. Moline plays against Limestone on the nightcap. And Westinghouse will play Galesburg. And also in between that, Westinghouse and Limestone match up next. And East Peoria play Englewood. And that's the rest of the day. Whole another slate tomorrow in this tournament. So good basketball to play. Come check out this tournament, the Galesburg Thanksgiving Tourney. So they're about to get a game going. So Tanner Rowe and just being on the camera. I want to thank everybody for listening in and wish everybody a good rest of the night.